And this is an example like the Moses poem where you use a single word title. And it, it kind of reminds me of that painting that Dele had of just a, a bread on a table. Uh, you look at this title and it seems very innocuous, but then you realize what it connects to later. Well, uh, just so you know, this is a series of about 8, 10, 12 poems I did that all had one word titles. There's a poem called Wine. There's a poem called Blood. There's a poem, uh, and so I've got, if you look, there's about 8, 10, 12 of them. Uh, and so they're all very Stevensian. And I just, just what we were talking about before, the first line of this poem is the point of fiction is a point. That's something that a lot of artists don't get today. You know, they're, they're, so, they're so into their fucking self-expression that they don't realize you have to make a point. There has to be a reason that you're expressing something. But anyway, yeah. go ahead. Many of your poems use little epigraphs at the beginning of it. Even if they're sort of de facto epigraphs, but they also work narratively within the poem. If I'm just looking here, let me get a specific example that I can show you that will connect well with bread. Uh, a dream of my dad in a, uh, in a which time was machine and mum's death a coming. Now, the first line is, is if purpose is the child of desire, and then it goes on to why are you here? Now, that's a bit of wisdom that you put in there, and then you drape a narrative around uh, uh, in between the, the curtains, and it will allow you to get that insight into uh, into into purpose, the child of desire, while also making interesting insights and giving it a narrative spine. This is similar to bread, where you'll use the point of fiction as a point, and then you'll play off that idea throughout the whole of the numbered sections. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great poem. I mean, it's one of it's one of those things like, uh... and it also uses you know darkness and, and different words that uh, most poets would butcher, and inverts them, either makes them literal or subverts them under different phrases. Yeah, well, like the ending of the poem, how simply this thing exists, making its point in this piece of fiction, this poem that is and is not a slim light portal in the dark room of the mind. Not the dark room as, a, as in a photographer, but a dark room. So I take, I'm, I'm take, I, I'm based, a poem like this, I would, I would say, is sort of my poetic equivalent to something like a Bergman's, uh, persona and that I'm, I'm basically just waving my dick around here and saying you can't do that you can't use words and these similar themes and make them great again and i i don't use any fancy words i mean you look at how simply this thing exists making its point in this piece of fiction this poem that is and is break not a slim light portal that's a, that's just a devastatingly great enjambment there that is and is not a slim light portal in the dark room of the mind I mean, yeah, that's total, that, you know, I mean, that's, that's total dick waving because, like you said, 99 other poets, 999 other poets, or 999,999 other poets would butcher those last four lines. Uh, if you gave them all those words, they could not put it in as good a, a, a formation as I do. The concatenation of those words is just bang. And if you compare it to a poem also with one word called milk, which you mm. wrote after watching The Thin Red Line, yeah. they're so different, mm. and they don't use the title the same way. Right. So Why would I? The, whole the question I would ask is... Th say th Relka, even right. if he was able to write the last four lines, or Stevens, who, who would be able to write the last four lines and invert the cliches. And and the thing, they, the thing though is... They would never be able to write those two poems, which are as different as... Rilke's poems were from Stevens. Yeah, and the thing the thing is, the very fact that you have to point that out shows you the utter lack of imagination that goes on in art today. People don't think. If if I was a painter, why would I want to? I mean, I would take, I would try to do a painting where maybe I had some Hudson River School aspects, maybe a little bit of abstract expressionism just to to, to use it as, as not as the whole thing, but just as a little point here or there, take a little bit of Warhol and stuff, a little bit of Goya, uh, monstrous fantasy, use yeah, the, the light. The longer your poems stretch, too, you use techniques that seem bad. It's kind of like Eugene O'Neill's plays. He'll have seemingly bad writing in the dialogue that will not only serve his character, but use it as a, as a different device. So you'll have lines that will be referenced later in the poem and then redeemed because of the, the virtue of what comes later. It's, it's, it's not the same as with a sonnet where there's not enough room to be 
having these different asides and have seemingly bad writing. Yeah. You'll have you'll have that. Well, you have the and and that's a didactic aspect of it too. You know, if you look at something like Persona or a much lesser film, but probably one of the best films that he did, John Luc Godard's Contempt, the fact that they 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 pull out and uh, you can hear the construction sound going on. Uh, I think it's in Godard's film, and I think later in uh, it might be in Hour of the Wolf. Uh, you you hear the artifice and whatnot, but it's not it's not just that they're, they're saying oh this is or Bergman is saying oh this is a film about a film. Uh, there, there's more to it because you get little moments of the artificiality of the characters that are interdiegetic reflections of what framed the film. And so I, I do similar things to that. And that's another thing, too, is whether it's poetry or prose, uh, I always try to bring in other art forms. But I'm not just going to write a novel, for example, that's influenced by other novels. Why can't I write an, uh, a novel that's influenced by painting or by uh, music? And I don't just mean music that I'm going to have the characters listening Whatnot, and I'm not just gonna. I'm not just gonna uh, do a poem that's oh, it's about jazz, and I'm gonna be free forming here or there. No, uh, why? Why is there a certain hook here or there? Why? I, I tried, for example, uh, the other day when I interviewed this fellow on Led Zeppelin to try to get him to uh, get a little bit deeper into the uh, the the strong construction, and he he sort of flubbed around a little bit. He he was an, he was a good solid interview, but I wish I I had someone who knew a little bit more about song construction that I could have teased some of that out because you know you there there's just a, an absolute lack of adventuresomeness in most of the art today, and it's it's a very kind of appalling thing because why do you why do you spend so much time doing all this art? You know, most people, I mean, I can do, I could do a great poem. I could do a, a 20,000 word uh, short story, probably a lot quicker and, and still better than most people. But why am I doing this? Most people don't even question why they do what. I got self-expression. You got self-expression. Just go out and jump up and down with a, you know, a, a, a billboard on your, on your chest. That yourself, that, that, that's nothing. The very fact, the fact that you want to, put something out there and challenge someone, that's enough self-expression in and of itself. But what are you doing in that self-expression that justifies that self-expression? Self-expression, who cares? I No no one's going to give a damn uh, that that you have this political opinion, that philosophic opinion, this religious uh, stance, if you don't put it in a, a frame that other people can engage with. And this is something that's totally missing from most of art. And so when you get to a poem like Bread, uh, why, why won't I, 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 I'm going to play on all the meanings of bread. It references the, the title to a, a Stevens poem. You're talking about bread as communion. You're talking about bread as the body, bread as the sustainer, the fertile crescent. I mean, there are, there are many different kinds of ways that you can talk about these things. And sometimes with poetry, you can get them all in a, this is only a two and a half page poem, but it's more complex. I can tell you than the whole entire oeuvre of a David Foster Wallace and all of his million and a half words of jism that he he published in his way. There is, and and I'm I'm not saying that hyperbolically. Literally, you could read everything that David Foster Wallace ever wrote, every motherfucking word, and you read these two and a half pages of bread, the poem that I I pawn him, P W N. Literally, you could put jism on the page and it would be of the same stature. Yeah. 